I think sometimes when we propose an alternate way of handling animals, Not this is my new thing where I start a video and try to confuse my wife. And yeah, know what I'm it works about. too. I think when we propose a different kind of way of handling an animal or doing something on the homestead that people are not used to. For example, Manage rabbit colony versus cages. Now we didn't come up with the colony idea. We learned it we, from other people, but when people are unfamiliar with it and we propose it, I think a lot of times people think we're saying, this is the greatest thing ever and nothing will go wrong and this is the only right way. Not true. It's obviously not the case. And anytime you start with a new animal, it doesn't matter what system you have, there will be a learning curve and there will be some losses. We have- Especially with something smaller like rabbits or chickens or ducks, something quail, right? There's uh, so many animals at once, there's a yeah. lot that can go wrong. We have shared lots of the pros about raising rabbits in a colony. But we always try to be totally honest here. Right, it would be a disservice if we would say, like, this will be perfect, nothing will go wrong. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the cons we've experienced raising the rabbit colony. How we fixed some of them, and some of them we're still working on. So let's get into some of the bad things that have happened because of the rabbit colony. And remember, if you're a fan of cages, there are pros to cages. We're not switching. We're gonna continue doing the colony because there are pros and cons to everything. We choose the pros and cons of the colony, but we like to share those with the audience because if you do a colony, you'll have these things happen too. I mean, if you do a cage, no, you wouldn't have the first problem. First problem you wouldn't have with cage probably. Who's that baby? <clears throat> Who's that little baby? Today is colony cleaning day, where we go in and we do a real deep cleaning of the rabbit colony. We have to do this probably once a month, where and we do a regular cleaning about once a week. Right now we're experiencing our first bit of sickness in our colony, which I wasn't surprised because we had really warm weather and then really cold weather, down below freezing. So we noticed our batch of white babies started sniffling, sneezing, and some snotty noses. What we think it is is pastorella, or snuffles. It's a bacteria, some say 90% of rabbits carry it. So a huge amount of rabbits have this, it will make them sick. There's different strains of pastorella. Some won't be too bad, some will be worse. Right now we're kind of watching and seeing what happens. Anybody who's sneezing has gone out, they're all old enough to go out. So they're outside in the grass. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on them and see what happens. We're doing this colony for meat rabbits. That means we are not going to take bunnies to a vet and get them on antibiotics to treat this. We're not interested in doing that. We're interested in having the strongest rabbits survive and breeding those. Can't help me. Now it could be if the strain is just a mild one and they have a strong immune system, they'll beat this no problem, but they'll always be carriers of this. And when they're under stress again, they'll show symptoms and become contagious to other rabbits again. The book that we've been using as a reference to how to treat the rabbits advises when in doubt, cull it out. So this that... One just needs in a bunch. So it stinks. Yeah, um, but share in the comments below if you have a colony of rabbits, if you're raising yeah. meat rabbits, yeah. if yeah. you've had yeah. this before yeah. and what you've done. Yeah. We're going to be culling yeah. heavily. And okay. just keep the strongest ones who don't who don't show any susceptibility to this. Wow, look at that, the whole place totally clean. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Now we need pellets. Now this disease, this is in all rabbits. It is not unique to the colony raising. If you have rabbits in cages, you can have this disease and 
So that has nothing to do with the fact that we're doing a colony. You can a little bit easier clean and disinfect your cages. Some people will like bleach or uh, you know, just disinfect all the metal and all the feeders and stuff. In the colony, it's harder to get it all clean and disinfected. Uh, but, you know, again, there's pros and cons to both way of raising rabbits. We like the colony for the most part. This is one of the cons. The next thing we wanted to show you and talk about is very much a problem that you will face more in a colony than you would in cages. And we have found a really good way to mitigate this problem. And we're going to talk about that. We've actually solved the problem. Uh, so we, while you will face this problem in a colony, it's easy to solve. We're going to keep talking about the problems with rabbits. The next one actually has killed some of our rabbits. This one hasn't killed any yet. But first it's time to do the Home City Camel Train shout out. And today's shout out goes to my buddy James, who's currently down in Florida, but should be back up here in PA hunting turkeys. Come on, James. James Corey and his family in Fort Myers, Florida. James, Joel, Kelsey, Kevin, and Denise are working hard to start up their first homestead. He says, we can't wait to get our first chickens and they're designing plans for an aquaponics system. Diving into aquaponics before hydroponics, that is brave. We tried it, didn't work for us, James, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna work awesome for you. You wanna come in and say hi? Tell them that James likes hunting in Pennsylvania. James likes hunting in P Pennsylvania. He's got family in Northwest Pennsylvania that he likes to come hunting with during usually turkey season. Should have been up here getting a turkey, James. And he's found it He's found it a great stepping stone into a more fulfilling lifestyle. So Go ahead. James is eagerly awaiting their little farm, which is just around the corner. James is eagerly awaiting their little farm that's just around the corner. Nice. That was a lot to remember. Ah. James says any aquaponics videos would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> I don't know anybody around here doing aquaponics. We'll have to get an interview lined up with somebody on the show. That would be great, a great topic to cover that we haven't done yet. So James, I will work on getting an aquaponics interview for the Live from the Barn show. If you would like to join us for our Live from the Barn shows, that's for the Homesteady Pioneers. We do the one hour show every Monday night with a guest. I interview them, ask them questions about something that they're an expert in. You can join us live for those and ask the guest questions. Click there. You can't become a Camel Train member, but by clicking there, you'll become a Homesteady Pioneer. You can join us for that. You can watch the entire library of all the other extended versions on demand and a whole lot more. Learn more by clicking there. Now let's tell you what we were doing that was having rabbits actually get killed and how so far we fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> a rabbit told him. <laughs> What's going on here? Break. Break time. Take a load off, mommy. Take a load off. Here. Next problem we faced with the rabbit colony started when our first litter of meat young ones the younglings? were about the younglings. <laughs> the younglings. That's about right. When they were about 10 weeks old, we started finding the younger. Uh, yeah, two, uh, like three litters down the line. Yeah, the very young ones killed. Like little murder scene. Yeah, we'd find one with two like just bite marks. So imagine a rabbit has those top and bottom just right like that. Like they just grabbed them and shook them and killed them. And they would just leave them in one spot. It was like a little rabbit serial killer because every time it was the same scene. What do they call that? Their MO? Same spot, yeah. same Weapon, same dead little bunny. Yeah, it was, it was awful every morning. <laughs> every morning, a dead little bunny. <laughs> the best part of waking up. 
is a dead bunny. <laughs> so we would go out and we'd find this, and the first one was like an anomaly, like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. And then we found another. And then we found a third one. And at that point we realized, okay, we got a problem here. So we started doing some research. The, the best answer we could find was that the first group of bunnies were reaching the sexual maturity and maybe getting, the males were starting to be aggressive um, in that like teenage phase. We are, Sam's never been aggressive at all towards the babies, so it's a funny thing. And if anybody has experienced this before in your colony or with your rabbits, let us know because it's. I still haven't conclusively found any information about it, um, and I'd like to see that. Yes, this is what was happening, but just on a thinking, maybe that's the problem. We moved the older bunch out, and we stopped stopped having dead baby bunnies. We moved them out. About a week went by, and then all of a sudden, we thought we'd solved it. Yeah, there were no more dead baby bunnies. And then, we came out one morning, and there was another dead baby bunny. So, the same MO in the neck. Yep, so we're thinking, oh man, maybe that maybe wasn't the problem. Else. Maybe Sam, our, our adult buck, was actually starting to kill him. We're looking around. We had left one of the older batch in there. They were, the couple of different litters are very close in size, so it was hard to tell them apart. But I was like, I think that's one of the big ones. And we grabbed him, brought him outside. And we haven't lost another bunny since. We haven't lost a baby bunny since. So our grow outs need to be moved. To separate these serial grow killing outs. rabbits. <laughs> grow outs, we call them. We had to build a little rabbit tractor to kind of get them away. And this kind of cemented, we had been going back and forth between do we do an outside rabbit colony with all the rabbits, or do we do rabbit tractors, or what do we do? And this kind of made it certain, all right, we need to be able to separate our grow outs right. from our main colony if we don't want any deaths from the older, more aggressive bunnies. Right, and it may be what's happening is because they're in the stall, there is a certain amount of space adult rabbits should have, and then they say in a number of babies. We could have maxed Easily out maxed that, that out. number of yeah. babies that we had in there. So just the size of the area could have yeah. just got too small for everybody. So we decided, you know what, going forward our plans for the rabbit, we're gonna keep our nursery colony in the barn. It's very safe, there's no predators, they can't escape unless we leave two or three doors open. And so far we've not done that. Um, we can keep an eye on the litters. We can control the breeding. If we would want to control the breeding more, it would be easy to take the buck and just put them out in a tractor. The grow outs are now all going out into rabbit tractors. Mm -hmm. And the current rabbit tractors are kind of makeshift, just quick through together things. But we do have some nice chicken tractors on the way. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, that'll be really nice for the bunnies to be in and nice for us to go in and out of too. Yes. Want to tell you a little bit of an update on our rabbit tractor. I, I really encourage you, if you're gonna build something for your animals, to do a quick little prototype, because you'll learn a lot from a quick prototype that you can apply to the much bigger, more expensive thing you're doing. I'm building some John Siskovich chicken tractors right now, as you've seen on the channel. But I think I'm gonna convert at least one of them to be a rabbit tractor, and there's very little I'll have to do to convert it. This prototype allowed me to see that this one by one, okay, that would be a two by two wire. Uh, that little wire, it's, uh, it works good for the rabbits, the two by two. It's a big enough hole where if you see behind me where the rabbits have been, they're able to get almost all the grass pulled up through it and really hammer that spot. I thought at first it was too small, but when we left them on there for a full, 12 hour period. They were able to get all the grass through it, but when we lift them up and move them, none of the rabbit's feet slip through and then get caught when we come down. No, sure, maybe once it could happen. I haven't had it happen yet. So this is a good stuff. I think John Siskovich chicken tractors don't have a bottom. I'm gonna test doing no bottom with these bunnies because they're very, very tame and they don't run if they get out. 
I'll give it a shot, but I think we're gonna want the bottom on it. So one of the things we're gonna do is put some of this wire on the bottom of one of our chicken tractors. Another thing that's nice is because of this wire, it doesn't sit too hard. The grass is pretty high and it holds it up off the ground. If they were to get a foot stuck, they could probably just pull it right out, no problem. Because the grass is really high. Test it, test it with your finger. Like I can't get it in there. Smoosh you under there and see if you can get out. All right here, let's see. Oh yeah, there's a lot of space. The other thing we've learned about these chicken tractors is you can save a ton of money on feed. We give these rabbits one little feeder full all day. They don't go through it until they've hammered all the grass and then they start picking at the feed. And they're still getting nice and big and full butcher size. So rabbits are an animal that getting them out on grass is gonna be really good. Getting these grow outs out on grass allow us to keep you know, we can keep feeding pellets to the three breeders and while they're nursing their young, but then as they get larger, our idea is to get all the grow outs outside and uh, in tractors. So that's how we're gonna do rabbits. This has seemed, so far it's helped with this murderous rabbit thing that was going on. Uh, could it happen again? We'll see, time will tell. We're still very new at rabbits, but for now it has solved the problem and yeah, it's been a really good move for the rabbit colony. in recent videos. We've used to have a lot of bunnies in this colony, but now it's the youngest batch of blues and a few of Rose's little ones and the three parents. There is not a lot of bunnies in here like, like there used to be, which would probably mean we're gonna go for less food, so. Hey, save more food. If you're curious about raising rabbits in a meat colony, on Monday night, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Dana from Pewakawaka Valley, who wrote the book, Raising Rabbits in a Meat Colony, that we use to kind of design our colony, she's coming on our show to talk about introduction to meat rabbits. So don't miss that, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday, Homesteady Pioneers, live from the barn show. If you want to join us live for that and ask questions of Dana, Click here to become a pioneer.